Hello and welcome to the Neptune Snackables playlist. My name is Ken Phillips and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about Neptune Database and our latest graph service offering, Neptune Analytics. This is going to be a level 200, a level 200 introductory session looking at both services and how you can use each individually as well as in combination to satisfy your graph application requirements. So you might be thinking, hold on, I've heard of Amazon Neptune, but I've never heard about Neptune Analytics. Well, if that's the case, Neptune Analytics was part of Dr. Swami Shivasu Brahmanian's keynote speech at the AWS reInvent 2023. I'll go into more details about Neptune Analytics throughout this video, and I've included a link to the whole keynote speech later on in the slide deck. Now, originally the Amazon Neptune term primarily focused on Neptune database, so they were kind of synonymous with each other. However, with the introduction of Neptune ML and now Neptune Analytics, the term Amazon Neptune is now the collective service name for Neptune Database, Neptune ML and Neptune Analytics. Let's first talk about Amazon Neptune Database. So Neptune Database went on general availability in 2018. Prior to that, AWS didn't have a graph database service that supported customers with highly connected data sets. Neptune Database is a fully managed service and it provides customers with flexibility and scalability for the most demanding of workloads. Neptune Database also supports a single writer, multiple reader architecture. When you create a cluster, you set a configuration based on the number of instances you want to use, for example, one writer and two read replicas. Neptune Database also supports serverless, which provides the flexibility to scale vertically based on the processing demands of your workload. For horizontal scaling, for workloads with variable read, variable read traffic, you can use read replica auto scaling to automatically increase and decrease the number of read replicas you have in your cluster. Neptune Database is also a memory optimized graph database, meaning it wants to store as much data in instance memory as it can in order to perform low latency queries. Architecturally, Neptune Database's compute and storage are separated, meaning data is stored in cluster wide shared storage rather than on individual instances. This means both can scale at different rates and provides durability to your data should an instance fail and need replacing. Both of the primary graph frameworks, that is Resource Description Framework, or RDF, and also Property Graph, are supported by Neptune Database. To query these, you can use any of the top three most widely used graph languages. So, for example, customers using RDF, you can use the Sparkle query language. For customers using Property Graph, you have a choice between the OpenCypher query language and the Gremlin traversal language. So now on to Neptune Analytics. As I previously mentioned, it went on general availability at reInvent in 2023, but we've already seen significant take up with customers. It is a fully managed in-memory graph database service. There are no instances to manage. You simply select the number of MNCUs or memory optimized Neptune capacity units, ranging from 128 to 4,096. One MNCU is, is equal to one gig of memory and proportion compute and networking. The configuration will depend on how much of your graph you want to store in memory. And when it comes to loading your data into your Neptune Analytics graph, it has a memory optimized architecture that provides superior load and scan rates with transactional support. Compared with Neptune Database, you can achieve up to 80 times faster loads, 20 times faster scans and 200 times faster columnar scans. At general availability, Neptune Analytics supports the property graph framework and to query it, you'll need to use the OpenCypher query language. However, where the Neptune Analytics support for OpenCypher differs significantly from that of the Neptune database is the ability to run popular graph algorithms using the call command. For example, weakly connected components, page rank, top K search, and single source shortest path. 
And what's more, Neptune Analytics supports vectors, meaning you can store vectors as properties on your graph object. And on the topic of running graph algorithms, these are the algorithms that Neptune Analytics currently supports, all callable directly from within OpenCypher queries. Notice the vector similarity algorithms, as I mentioned, such as top K and vector distance. These help support next generation vector search applications. And finally, on data ingestion. So both Neptune Database and Neptune Analytics support a bulk load API. However, due to the way Neptune Analytics is designed, you can achieve up to 80 times faster load speeds. Cool, eh? Let's now take a look at how they compare when it comes to the types of graph workloads customers want to run. So Neptune Database is an OLTP database. It supports more transactional workloads. In contrast, Neptune Analytics has been designed to support analytical workloads and it is tuned for memory intensive graph computations, whereby you're querying across large portions of your graph data in order to identify similarity, centrality, etc., things like that. From a storage perspective, Neptune Database supports a shared storage architecture, providing data access to all instances within a cluster. As Neptune Analytics is memory-based, it supports workloads that use graph analytics ephemerally. For example, quickly loading data from S3 or Neptune Database, run graph algorithms across the data, and then closing it down. From a Gen AI perspective, Neptune Database can be connected to support LLMs such as Amazon Bedrock through the use of Neptune Bespoke LangChain integrations. So the same can also be said for Neptune Analytics. However, where Neptune Analytics comes into its own is its native support for vector embeddings. These are stored as properties against objects in your graph. And you can use these to do things like vector distance and similarity searches, which is a core piece of functionality in modern Gen AI based applications. Some common use cases for Neptune database are so things like social networking, uh, fraud alerting, customer 360, effectively where you're using deterministic methods to traverse the graph. Some common use cases for Neptune Analytics are things like targeted content recommendations, fraud investigation, network threat detection, where you want to quickly analyze large amounts of data to gain additional insights such as community detection or fraud and threat analysis. So to the big question, when should you use Neptune Database versus when should you use Neptune Analytics? So if you have a transactional workload where you have requirements such as like 100,000 queries per second or multi-availability zone and or multi-region deployments, then Neptune database is the right fit for you. If, however, you have a graph database solution or you need a graph database solution that provides the ability to quickly load large amounts of graph data and then analyze it using low latency graph algorithms such as PageRank, top case search and weekly connected components, for example, then Neptune Analytics is the right fit. Now, as we've seen, Neptune Analytics and Neptune Database provide similar yet significantly differing features. Neptune Analytics is not a replacement for Neptune Database, and in many cases, we see the two services complement each other. So, for example, in a Gen AI application, you're going to want to be able to have a persistent store of your graph data and use that as context for an LLM or, um, and this is where you'd use Neptune database. Equally, once vector embeddings have been calculated, you're going to want to do something like vector similarity searches across your graph data to find similar objects that relate to a user query, for example. As Neptune Analytics supports vectors, this is where you're going to need to use that. With both, you can integrate with LLMs, including Bedrock and SageMaker models, using the Neptune OpenCypher QA chain library in LangChain. So let's summarize what we've been discussing in this session. So what are some key takeaways? Well, Neptune Database, formerly just Neptune, 
is a serverless graph database. It's designed to support workloads that have hundreds of thousands of queries per second by providing horizontal scaling using read replicas and automatic vertical scaling using serverless. It supports features such as multi-AZ and multi-region deployments. Neptune Analytics is a graph analytics database engine. It's designed to be able to ingest large amounts of data quickly and then for you to run graph algorithms such as page rank, breadth first search and vector distance across large portions of the graph with very low latency. It's key to also understand that Neptune Analytics is not a replacement for Neptune Database. In contrast, as we've seen for workloads such as generative AI platforms, combining both Neptune Database and Neptune Analytics provides a highly scalable, low latency approach to graph queries, integration with LLMs and running graph algorithms. So before I go, I want to share some additional resources with you. So firstly, there's the full AWS reInvent 2023 keynote speech. Um, there's also a landing page for the Neptune Analytics where you can discover more about the specific use cases and features of the service. Um, if you're looking for a more hands-on experience with Neptune, why not go ahead and deploy a database cluster or analytics graph and actually try it for yourself? Um, from there, you can use our open source Neptune notebooks to connect to your database cluster or Neptune graph. And from you can also run sample code or walk through the end to end sample applications that are available. And finally, if you want to get hands on without needing to build an application yourself, try out our demos page at the Neptune Demos Hub. We've got demo applications for identity, fraud and security graph. And we've recently added an analytics graph demo too. Make sure you bookmark this page as we'll be adding more demos this year. Um, and if you've got a graph workload and you're interested in discussing it with us in more depth, please feel free to reach out to wwso-neptune-ssa at amazon.com. And with that, I'd like to say a big thank you for watching.